a lot of this lag. All right, Shalom. Shalom. We're going to give our praise to our Father which art in heaven. His name is Yahweh, Bashem, Yahusha, Bashem, Kakadash. We're going to salute to the brothers who preach in the new covenant, the Kadash Bariyat, in the blood of Hamashat, Yahweh Shah, and to the remnant men, women, and children that's coming to this truth in this lateral end, man. And we're coming to you with another count. And uh, what are you going to start with, huh? Uh, let's start with John chapter 3. John. All right, because the brother did come up quoting that. Yeah. All right, now this is John chapter three. Um, let's go to let's start at verse fourteen. John three and fourteen, and it says, "And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life." For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's the gospel, man. All right? That's the good news that the Heavenly Father has sent us out to preach in these last days before destruction comes, man. Come on. Right? Because when we go back to the scriptures, what was the whole purpose of uh, the serpent even being lifted up in the first place? And it was because the curse had went forth amongst the people, um, which was the uh, the serpents went and bit everybody, man. But the Lord said, whoever believes or looks upon this staff and this serpent that I set up, they are gonna be uh, delivered from that judgment, man. And that's the same thing that's going on in these last days. It's just, you have to believe on the bloodshed of Yahweh Shah on the cross, which is what? The new covenant, man. All right, just to prove it, uh, Hebrews chapter 9. All right. Just setting everything up. Uh, 9 and verse. You can show 15, 9 and 17. Right? Because right? that's the implication of what Yahweh Shah is saying. One more time. It says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So Yahweh Shah was lifted up on what? The cross, man. On that plank of wood. Well, that's the same thing. You have to believe on him being lifted up, which is what? The establishing of the new covenant. Huh. All right, let's go ahead and prove that. Huh? Well, this is a Hebrew chapter 9, verse 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. Right. And by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions right. that that were under the first testament, mm -hmm. they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. You see that they might receive the promise of of eternal inheritance by way of what his death, man. That you believe and you may gain everlasting life, man. Uh -huh. That you might get deliverance, and it's all by way of the sacrifice. Go ahead, verse sixteen. For where a testament is, for where a covenant is made, go ahead. There must also of necessity be the death of the testator. That's it. So for a covenant to be made, there must of necessity, it must happen that somebody is put to death, man. Right. There must be a, a, a slaughtering or something because when you understand the old covenant and the old testament, the only way that you would get forgiveness of sins is by the sacrificing of an innocent. A creature that was according to the old but what Yahweh Shah came to do was establish a new testament by way of that same process because all the law prophesied of him Hebrew chapter 10 and 1 by, by the Shah. John this is Hebrew chapter 10 verse 1 mm -hmm. for the law for the law having a shadow of good things to come and not a very image of of the thing mm -hmm. or the things can never with those sacrifices, with those old sacrifices in the old world, the, in the old testament, in the old covenant, those slaying the lambs, the slaying the bulls, go ahead, I can can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually mm -hmm. make the comers there unto perfect. perfect. You see, and they couldn't make you perfect. So the Lord had to do something new. He had to create another option for you to do what become perfect 
all right? And perfection is what a lot of men fear, or you feel like you can't be made perfect. But that's not what the scriptures say. The scriptures tell you, through the Lord's sacrifice, a man could obtain perfection, which is what? In the mind, man. That's why when the Lord, Yahweh, who the world knows as Jesus Christ, came in onto the scene, he told you, look, be ye perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect, man. By way of what? Stopping sin at the beginning where, where it starts, which is sown into your heart, man. Because in the old, for example, a man could uh, uh, hate his brother and not murder him and he was still justified. You could look at another man's wife and from the outside, you could still be justified. However, inwardly you was wicked, right? Because all you had to do if you messed up was give a sacrifice and you just keep on going with your sin, but you was justified. But it never stopped the problem. You know, and that's what the Lord Yahweh Shah came to do. He came to die for our sins that you sin no more, man. By way of his blood. Matter of fact, so matter, like yeah, matter, matter of fact, what you just said is that's that like I said, that video I did where the thought, the body follows the spirit, man. So whatever you think it, man, that's what your body gonna pursue. That's right, that's right. You know, as the brother was saying, no matter what, you're meditating. <laughs> meditating on doing whatever you're trying to do. It's eventually gonna come out, man, and you're gonna eventually your body gonna follow the spirit, right. whether you're doing good or wicked. Mm -hmm. Yep. So as the brother said, if you, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you a murderer in your mind, you gonna act on that one way, shape, or form in the future, man. Because the more that you speak it, the more that you meditate upon it, the more that's is uh, uh, grounds for Satan to nourish that up until you fulfill it. The more that you constantly covet in, you eventually gonna steal. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of our people's problem, man. They always see somebody with something that they want, you know? So if you let that thought fester long enough, you gonna end up stealing. You gonna end up taking somebody's life for something, man. But Yahweh Shah came to do away with that. Let's, uh, Salak, you wanted to say something now? No, that's it. That's it. First Peter uh, chapter one of verse two, brother. So Yahweh Shah came to, to teach us it's not about the outward man and the outward appearance. That's not what you're getting judged on. You know? And a lot of our people got to understand this. A lot of church folk got to understand that. A lot of brothers that's, that know that they Israelites got to understand that. It's not about the outer man and what you making to seem look righteous. Because a lot of our people, hey, they throw on a three-piece suit look fly when they go into church but they inner thoughts is all wicked and then you got Jake and, and that know that they is real they throw on a pair of fringes they throw on a pair of fringes throw on an e5 and have a hundred incense burning and think that that if that's how the lord is going to judge you off of how you look now the lord don't judge off of that he says, I try the hearts, I try to reign. So the Lord is always looking into your mind. It doesn't matter if you ain't physically move on it. If you a murderer in your heart, he said, you killed your brother already. So this is why the sacrifice of Yahweh Shai had to come to do away with all that. That was in the outer man. And he had to focus on the spirit. Go ahead. I this is uh, 1 Peter's chapter 1, verse 2. Like, elect according to the fore foreknowledge of the most high right the father through sanctification of the spirit the what sanctification of the holy spirit go ahead until obedience mm. and sprinkling of the blood of yahweh shah hamashiach that's it and through the sprinkling of the blood of yahweh shah believing on his death right your, your mind is sprinkled unto obedience. Okay, that's what the blood does. That's why the blood of Yahweh Shad is new covenant that he made with us is so valuable. Because one thing that the old couldn't do is it couldn't make you perfect inwardly, man. Right. But the blood of Yahweh Shad sprinkles you where? 
and your conscience. Go ahead and read it back, my brother. Con, this is First Peter chapter one, verse two. Elect according to the foreknowledge of the Most High, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, mm -hmm. unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Yahweh Shah Hamashiach. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. That's right. And that's proof and evidence that you've entered into the covenant. Because how a covenant was made according to the old, uh, old covenant, when Moses was out in the wilderness, he had to sprinkle the blood on the book and upon the people. And as soon as you were sprinkled and hit with the blood, that's the minute that you entered into that covenant. All right? Well, the blood of Yahweh Shai works the same. Through the sprinkling of the blood, it's an oath that's made with the Father, man. All right? Let me see. Let's grab... Uh, Hebrews let's hit Hebrews chapter 10 Bible right? Hebrews 10 and verse 19 Bible shot. God, this is Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19 mm -hmm. having therefore brethren boldness to enter into the holiest right we have boldness to enter into the holiest which is what the sanctuary of the heavenly father where the lord dwells all right this is where you go to be able to be in his presence man to be able to speak to the father go ahead so lock it up god by the blood of yahweh shah mm -hmm. by a new and living way which he hath consecrated for us through the veil that's it so the Lord gave us what? Access into the most holy place by way of his blood, man. Because there's no way a man could ever stand in the presence of the heavenly father if he's in the flesh, if he has sin. All right? That's why the Lord had to get rid of Adam and Eve from the beginning and kick them out, man. It's because they had sin upon them. So what does the blood of Yahweh Shai do? It forgives you of all transgressions. All right? And it gives you access to the Father where you can speak to them directly, man. So that's the intercession, is Yahweh Shah's blood. The intercession is what, uh, uh, um, you know, it's the lifeline between you and the Most High. Otherwise, you can't speak to God, man. So you got a lot of people in this world, and they want to say and claim they got a relationship with the Father, but you ain't got the blood of Yahweh Shah covering you. You ain't got the blood of of the Christ, who the world knows is Jesus covering you, you can't talk to the Lord. That's why he had to make this way through his death. Go ahead. God, this is uh, Hebrew chapter 10, verse 20, and continue. That is to say his flesh. That's right. Go ahead. Verse 21, and having the high priest over the house of the most high, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance See, with a true heart not a not a heart of, of uh evil imaginations and wicked devices man you see this is how you draw near to the heavenly father is through that cleansing of the heart through the cleansing of the mind all right Slacky, go ahead. Con, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith mm -hmm. having our faith i mean having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience in our bodies washed with pure water. That's it. So you get that washing of the word by way of Yahweh Shai, through his blood, which is what? Representation of the Holy Spirit. You see? Through the sprinkling of your conscience, you are now able to be perfect. All right? It has nothing to do with the outer man anymore. It's about the inner man. And that's what a lot of people, as we said, gotta understand. You got a holier than thou spirit that's moving around in these last days. We just keep it on Christians for now, right? Cause you go, like we said, you go to these churches, you assume a man is holy because he got on the suit. He got on the, sh the shiny, the shiny suit, the shiny shoes, you know? And his title. Yeah, and his title. His go title. ahead, you got it out. You know what I'm saying? And, and you're looking at that and his title. As elder, that's deacon, you know, that's pastor. Yeah, but what are they doing? 
as Creflo Dollar. What are they doing? Joe Osteen. What are they doing? What's the other one? Uh, T.D. Jakes. Jakes. Yeah. yeah. You know? Uh, is the suit showing his who he is? Or is it his what? His spirit manifesting the body, showing you, yeah. hey, who he really is. The suit was a cover-up. The voice that he spoke was a snake, a serpent, and defiled the people, man. That's right. That's right. So they apply the guys in the truth, right. you know? Jake think because they throw on fringes that they more holy than the next man. But your inner thoughts is wicked, man. Late at night, you med meditating on all types of evil. So it doesn't matter. See, the Lord don't see as man sees, man. Cause they'll quit. They'll they'll be quick to try and condemn us, All right? But we already perfect in the mind. We already made perfect in the mind. So there's no condemnation that can stick. And that's what Yahweh Shai came to do. He came to actually show you who is truly righteous, God. or how to be truly righteous, man. Okay. You grabbing something out? I will. All right. Keep on going. So it says, right, to prove it, this is John chapter 3. This is John chapter 3 mm -hmm. in verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Son. All right. That said, if, if you don't mind, I, yep. uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, Bible Christian. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, and um, we'll go to the administration of condemnation. 2 Corinthians, I mean, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 2, verse 3? Nah, no, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Yeah, this is uh no, 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 no. verse six. Right. Yeah, start of verse six. Right. This is uh Second Corinthians chapter three, verse six. Uh -huh. Who also hath made us able ministers of the New Testament, New Covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. That's it. Not of the letter, but of the Spirit. It's not according to the works and the deeds of the law. It's not according to what a man sees on an outer appearance. That's not what this New Testament is about. That's not what the sacrifice and bloodshed of the Lord was about. Go ahead. Con, for the letter killeth, mm -hmm. but the spirit giveth life. Because the letter kills, man. The, the old covenant kills. Everybody is already condemned according to the words of the Most High. Why? Because everybody done committed sin. You done committed adultery. You done stole. You done murdered. You done got hatred in your heart. You done, you, you uh, uh, done got drunkenness. All these things, you already condemned according to the old covenant. That's what that scripture says. So read it one more time. John, this is 2 Corinthians chapter 3, uh -huh. verse 6. Who also have made us ministers of the New Testament. But that's why the Lord sent us out in these last days. His prophets. Because we want to give you the new covenant, this new testament, to deliver you from death. Go ahead. Con. Of the new testament, new covenant, not of the letter, but of the spirit. Yeah, so we're not out here to condemn a man. And that's what a lot of these people that do. When they pick up this Bible, the next thing that happens is they turn into Pharisees, man. And you want to condemn, condemn, condemn. Everybody's already condemned according to the scriptures, man. So now you wonder why death goes on. Why is it that somebody got judged? It's a car accident. Somebody got their head blown off. Somebody dies of a drug overdose. All these things is because you have already transgressed against the Lord, but you need something to cover you in these last days. According to Revelation chapter 7, right? Let's just read it. Let's go ahead and grab it. Right, because this blood is what's going to cover you and keep you safe in these days, man. This is Revelation. not hurt the death. Go ahead. This is Revelation chapter seven, verse one. Mm -hmm. 
And after, after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth. That's it. So John, when he was in the spirit, he saw four angels holding back the destruction that's going to happen in these last days, man. Go ahead. That the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, mm -hmm. nor on any tree. That's it. And what's that wind? All right. The nuclear destruction that's going to happen in these last days, man. Come on. You see, the scriptures tell you that the Lord is going to judge Babylon with a destroying wind. All right. This hellfire that's going to come down, man. All right. This is what all the angels are uh, waiting on, man. This is what everybody is waiting on is that this destruction happens. All right, but it can't happen until something else happens. Go ahead. Come, Revelation 7, verse 2. And I saw another angel ascending from the east. Yep. But then he saw another angel ascending up to heaven, man, which is who? Yeah, how was Shai, who the world knows as Jesus Christ. He saw him ascending up to heaven and he said what? Having the seal of the living God. Mm -hmm. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth in the sea, mm -hmm. saying, hurt not the earth. Right, hurt not the earth. Don't destroy it yet. Go ahead. Neither the sea, neither the trees, mm -hmm. till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. That's it. So what did Yahweh Shai do? He made intercession. The Lord, Yahweh Shai said, hold on. Don't destroy the earth yet because I got certain men down there that I'm going to reserve that they don't be judged, man. Right. The same way that uh, he preserved Lot, the same way he preserved Noah in the last days from the flood, he's doing it again. But this time it's by way of what? The seal or the thawa, the mark, the mark of exemption that you're not destroyed with the wicked in these last days, man. You see, which is what the blood of Yahweh Shah that covers you. All right, go ahead. This is a uh, Revelation chapter 7, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any trees. Mm -hmm. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with the loud voice of the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. That's it. Revelation 14, uh, uh, verse 1. Huh? So that's it. The destruction can't happen until these men are sealed by way of the blood by way of the new covenant this new testament the belief in Yahweh Shah's blood all right everybody else is going to get hit with this judgment let's read it right? Bible Gashai, for those who don't know this is revelation chapter 14 verse 1 mm -hmm. and i looked and lo a lamb stood on the mount sion uh -huh. and with him a hundred and forty and four thousand the temple of the most high with Yahweh Shah. go ahead having his father's name written in their foreheads see, and they have the father's name written in their foreheads which means what that they know the father and the father knows them it didn't say those that didn't have the, the seal that didn't have the mark because the lord ain't coming back for them man God. he's only coming back for those who truly know him in these last days who are truly righteous inwardly man that's why his name is in their foreheads which represents what your mind being perfect all right go ahead and i heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder and i heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps and they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders and no man could learn that song but the hundred and four and four thousand 
which were redeemed from the earth. That's it. it was the men that was redeemed from the earth, man. All right. These were the ones that escaped the judgment to come. All right. What was it? Uh, I was really looking for verse. I think it was like chapter 15 where they stood upon the sea of, uh, the sea of glass. But that's fine. Yeah. Right. These were the men that the heavenly father preserved to not be hurt by the second death, man. All right, and they sung what? The new song, they sung this new covenant, right? They actually understood the Lord's righteousness and it wasn't of their own. Done. All right, you got something? Nah, go ahead. Okay, got okay. Let's see, uh, yeah, right back to John, that's what it was. Let me see the brother there. I saw precepts going up early. Shalom, my. Shalom. Uh, yeah. 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 If you could, I'll grab Matthew 23 and 26. Oh, read down. You say Matthew 23 and what? Right, because it all comes down to a man being righteous inwardly in his heart, man. That's the ones that the Heavenly Father is going to preserve in these last days. Those are the ones who are going to be saved from death. All right? This is fact. Oh, oh, so, so I can, let's see it. Let's see it. 20. And then let's start at, uh, man, we can stay the whole day. Man, we started at 13. Huh? Con, this is Matthew chapter 23, verse 13. But woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, That's right. hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering in, like that are entering to go in. That's it. And that's what this whole lesson was based upon, right? men shutting up the kingdom of heaven because they believe that they holier than thou now we had to bring all that out to show what that men are already condemned but there's only one way to actually be justified by the heavenly father man and it's not by way of the outer appearance it's not by way of you thinking that you're holier than the next man right but go ahead up right? just keep on going but this, they shut up the kingdom God. The this is uh matthew chapter 23 verse 14 Woe unto you, scribes mm -hmm. and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses, mm -hmm. and for the pretense make long prayers. That's it. You see, everything that's of outward, man. You know, and that's one thing. When you come into the new covenant and truly understand it, and the Lord is really moving with you in the spirit, you see how fake a lot of dudes is, man. You know? I think that I met the worst uh, uh, men in my life coming into the truth. Why? Because they will do things like this. Right. Number one, they shut up the kingdom to everybody else. So even coming out preaching in the hood, that's looked down upon by certain camps, man. You know, they say, oh, the Lord ain't dealing with them. But the Lord sent us to them, man. Mm -hmm. All right. Just because Jake walking down the street smoking a blunt don't mean he can't get it. Right. But they'll see that and say that that man, the Lord ain't uh, uh, dealing with him, right? You didn't have roll up one, you know? Yeah, yeah, they do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, had Jake and Mick uh, caught rolling up one too. You know, it's just the point is, as the brother keeps saying, man, it's not the outward appearance that's gonna make you righteous, man. Yeah. It's here, it's in your mind, it's in your soul, it's in your spirit. Yeah, and I wanna uh, bring this up, right? Because you gotta see, we not we not moving like other guys do, man. All right. If we if you ain't hear us say something on camera, we don't stand behind that too. If it never came out of our mouth, I don't care who else around us is doing it, man. Hey, we moving in the spirit over here with the eleventh hour. Huh. All right. So that said. Anyway. <laughs> That said, we don't judge a man from the outward. You gotta understand this. Hey, just because a man, as we said, might be 
might be in sin at the moment don't mean the Lord wasn't dealing with him or isn't dealing with him. Sometimes it happens quicker for others, man. So for example, right? Everybody before you came into the truth, you was uh, uh, in sin. Let's, let's grab that, matter of fact. Uh, first John, first John chapter one. First John chapter one. Start at the top. Uh, let me see. Let's start at verse five, bro, for sure. This is first John chapter one, mm -hmm. verse five. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you mm -hmm. that the most high is, is light and in him is no darkness yeah. at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. That's right and do not the truth yeah and where does darkness abide at is it so is he literally talking walking through the dark or is darkness a state of mind you see that's what we say uh -huh. hey, you can have everything of the outward on you can have the phylacteries down to the foot you can have on a shiny suit you can have on the armbands and the meat tree and all that and a thousand incense burning but your mind is still in darkness so if you say that you in the light, but you hate your brother, you a lie. Go ahead, huh? God. This is verse six. Mm -hmm. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Yeah, and we don't have the truth. And showing you where, what is the truth is that your mind is in light. That your mind is enlightened. You see, because hey, people will love to jump up and say, hey, I love God. I'm, all these things, but your heart is full of darkness. All right. So he says, if you do that, hey, you have not the truth. You a liar. OK, so that's what the blood of Yahweh Shai is coming to do. We coming out here to minister to you the word or this light, the truth of it, that you may be perfect inwardly. Go ahead. Huh? This is verse seven. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Hamashiach, Yahweh Shah, or Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from all sin. seven back again this is first john chapter one verse seven but if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of yahweh hamashiach his son cleanses us from all sin he cleanses us from all sin and that's all that's all you will want right all your sins are forgiven so you even have a new confidence in the heavenly father you know so that that shows you you know why a lot of guys lean on that type of stuff why do you lean on uh, uh the deeds of the law why do you lean on looking righteous outwardly man you see it's because you have not confidence so you got to get your confidence from somewhere you know whenever you're ready yeah you gotta get your confidence from somewhere, so it's always an external thing. Hey, Jay could do that, right? If you feel like you a lame, for example, hey, Jay could damn buy every shoe in the world. The, the, the nigga with the most shoes be really the one with the least amount of confidence. Yeah, they be insecure. Yeah, yeah. You see that every time. You know, when you reach that uh, hiking, you always see that. When you sit, when you be up there in the boardrooms and. You, you see how men be moving or women be moving. They transpire the outer to really show their insecurity in the inner, man. That's right, that's right. That's what we get, man. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the Jake that bought the most shoes be the one with the least amount of confidence. 
You know, if he came down to him having one pair of shoes forever, you ain't gonna he you ain't gonna see him talk, you know, like he do. Right? You ain't gonna see him move like he do, man. But see, you gotta be able to have the truth in you and not on you, man. You know? That's why Jake, they'll get, like I said, they'll get all this Israelite gear to look like the most ancient prophet. You know, but Yahweh Shai didn't come like that. You know, John the Baptist ain't come like that. He wasn't decked out with it, with the ephod to the flow, man. He had a, 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 you know, tattered clothes on. You see, so they'll come and they'll come by and see us. They all that them can't be men of the Lord. Why? Because I got, you know, okay. regular see? clothes on. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Jake out here do that too. It's just because we ain't out here in a in a shiny suit with a Cadillac parked right here. They feel like there's no need to listen, right? But the truth is in us just as way more than uh, any Christian pastor could be, right? So all that said, you want to be able to have confidence that what? Your sins is forgiven, that the Holy Spirit is within you, that wisdom is moving within you. And this is what the new covenant is about. That's why Yahweh Shah told the woman, he said, look, those that worship the Most High must worship him in what? In spirit? He didn't say in flesh right. and in a lie. Okay? He didn't say in a in a certain garment. He said in the spirit and in truth, man. And that's what the Lord says. That's who the Father seeks. Matter of fact, let me grab that, man. As you were saying, though, you know, as you're looking that up, you know, men think they have to be justified. I mean, we've been seeing that all our lives, you know, who had the who had the Jordans on, justified them as being the best person in the class, you know what I'm saying? Who was rocking this and who was rocking that? That that was the guy that, that was really holding the truth, but it was the opposite, man. That's right. It was the guy that was on the corner speaking them, you know, whatever he was speaking, he was speaking them facts, man. But since he didn't have, you know, that attire on, everybody just looked at him as being a crazy dude on the street, just as, he, as they do us. So, them guys just always yapping and, and complaining and this and that. No, man, they even what they call Jeremiah, the line of the prophet, one of them, one of them prophets, they said that, you know, because why? He was trying to uh, speak the will of the Lord. That's why we always say we're about our father's business. That's right. We keep going back and forth with brothers, man, on certain things. We just keep, as the brother said, the eleventh hour, we're gonna speak through the spirit. The spirit is gonna tell us what we do. Ever since we came out with the new covenant through the spirit, we just been walking with the most high through the spirit on what to do from week in to week out, man. That's it. Yep. And you got a whole bunch of uh knuckleheads, man, that think. You know we ain't we ain't in the truth because we ain't got an ephod on right? because we ain't we ain't wearing fringes mm -hmm. that got nothing to do with the truth being in you man right you see so guys that move like that they don't miss the mark you don't even understand the most high okay now to grab it this is john chapter four john chapter four and verse 22 matter of fact and that's in hit romans chapter 2 I, uh, uh, right this is john chapter 2 and verse 22 i started 21 yahweh shah said unto her woman believe me the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at jerusalem worship the father and that's what they was trying to do right those men that was holding on to that uh, old covenant so much, they didn't even understand that what John was doing was right. What John the Baptist was doing was right in them days, man. Why? Because there was like everybody that wants to worship the Lord got to come up here. Right. That's what the deeds of the law say. But John was setting the way for you how it shall to come. Malachi, Malachi chapter 4 tells you that, man. Or just Malachi chapter... Uh, uh, Four Malachi chapter was it three, right? 
the messenger of the covenant, he's coming and that he's going to send his servant to do what? Prepare the way. All right. And through this way, he went. How you doing? Bro? Uh, no problem. How you doing? Hold up. You said what? Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all yeah. be doing all right? Yeah. Good to see you, man. Y'all be out here. Good to see you, man. 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 Good to see you, This is Malachi. As he finding as he finding that scripture, man, it's just a beautiful thing, man. To be able to teach and preach to people that's in the street, man. And bring them to us, man. Through the word as we were speaking about, and me and my brother was talking about this this morning. I mean before camp. Uh, Psalm 19, man. That the word, the people are hearing the word, man. And they come, they remember you, bro. That's a beautiful thing that they can come and talk to you with or without an E5, bro. You know, most Jake, they'll just, yeah, you know, they, we might as well bring out that scripture too. Uh, we'll grab it out if you don't mind. Uh, Isaiah. 65 5. Right? So we ain't held to no uh, camp doctrine, right? Or how they will preach. You know, everybody is, is able to come over here and discuss with us, man. You know, we ain't looking down on nobody, even guys that's in a new covenant. Right? We always got arms open. <laughs> Rather it be GMS, Safari, so called guys in the new covenant, right? That hate their brother. Hey, we willing to, to talk, man, right? This is how the kingdom is going to be established. Even when you read this in Malachi, right? He says, let me grab this, for example. Malachi chapter 4, Malachi chapter 4 and verse 5. It says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Right, which is what? Being able to make peace, man. You see? And so if, if Elijah was moving that way, she's not the prophets. If Elijah was going to turn the hearts of the children to the fathers and the fathers to the children, should we not move the same? All right? And this is, what it, this is how the kingdom is going to be made manifest. Not by niggas going back and forth all damn day, man. You know? Making the ministry look bad. Go ahead, huh? That was the king that we always speak about, uh, king etiquette, man. The king etiquette is what? It's the way you're supposed to move. If you're a king, you ain't moving like a pawn, man. You're moving according to king's way, the way a king's supposed to be. If you're moving like a pawn in a king position, man, hey, you're going to get wiped off the board. That's right. That's right. Yep. And it's just going to show you an example of that. Go ahead. This is Isaiah 65, verse 5, mm -hmm. which say, Stand by thyself, come not near to me, for I am holier than thou. You see, that's how a lot of guys do. That's a that's a pawn, that's a pawn trying to uh, move like a king, right? You, you ain't got that type of uh, uh, juice on you, man. You know what I'm saying? Only Yahweh got that to where he said, Look, hey. He got to be gone out of my presence. All right? A man is not to move that way. So everybody that comes by, yeah, we're going to talk to them, man. If a brother want to sort some things out, we're going to talk. That's how you're supposed to. Go ahead. Right? What else is left on there? Con, this is Isaiah 65, verse 5. We say, stand by thyself. Come not near to me, 
for I am holier than thou. saying but Yahweh Shah ain't moved like that see Yahweh Shah came to establish the kingdom and he did it by way of examples man so as the brother said men want to move like a king but a, a true king understands he's a servant to the people that's why when you read the scriptures the Lord got pissed off um he got pissed off at the people because they said give us a king like the other nations uh, yeah. all right let me see something. Uh, okay, yeah, I got it right First here. First Samuel. Yep, First Samuel. First Samuel chapter 8. We just going in the spirit, man. First Samuel chapter 8 and verse 9. It says, Now therefore hearken unto their voice, how be it yet protest solemnly unto them. Protest solemnly unto them and shew them the manner of king that shall reign over them. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked of him a king. And he said, This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen, and shall run before his chariots. The Lord says, since y'all want a king of y'all own, he gonna be a niggard, man. Yeah. He's not gonna serve you. Y'all gonna have to serve him in a manner where the Lord wanna do that, right? We'll get to that in a second. Yeah. <laughs> it's, what's going on? Verse Samuel chapter 8 and verse 10. And Samuel told all the words of the Lord unto the people that asked him of a king. And he said, This will be the manner of king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself, for his chariots, and to be his horsemen. And some shall run before his chariot. And he will appoint him captains over thousands and captains over fifties, and will set them to ear his ground, and to reap his harvest, and to make his instruments of war and instruments of his chariots and he will take your daughters to be confectionaries and to be cooks and to be bakers <laughs> so he's showing y'all that to lead up for his own service man that's right, that's right. you know read that back again Bubba uh -huh. and he will take your daughters uh -huh. to be confectionaries and to be cooks uh -huh. and bakers uh -huh. and he will take your fields and your vineyards and your olive yards even the best of them and give them to his servants. He said, even the best of them and give it to what? His servants. His servants, man. Servitude to a king when you already have a king, man. That's what the new covenant give you, that freedom to be able to sit with your king, man. That's what the Pharisees was doing. They was moving in that same the house of Saul. <laughs> you know, the house of Saul came back. That's the, that's the niggas that they said, uh, they ain't want to give the vineyard back over. Oh yeah, kind. Yep. You know, they said, "Hey, this is the heir right here. Let's kill him so we can keep the, the inheritance, <laughs> inheritance to ourselves." You know. <laughs> and it says, "And he will take your men servants and your maid servants, and your goodliest young men and your asses, and put them to his work." Put them to his work, man. They're like yeah. men on the street. From the men on the street to even in men in, in, in Israel, even in the church, man. They take all your the best of the best, yeah, facilitate it yeah. to make them greater. That's right, that's right. <laughs> you see it since you I, I see the brother seen it since we were child. And the brother who got spiritual ears and ears and eyes seen it, man. Yeah. You used to come home after a service, 
you you see certain things, you might say it to the family, and what do they do? They rebuke you, man. That ain't what it is. That's what I see, you know? He gets greater, and uh, we yeah. still stay at the bottom, yeah, yeah. you know? That's that ain't, how you have a shot. Yeah, that ain't how they move, man. <laughs> he, John told you that. He said, uh, he, must, he must increase, he must I die. must decrease, yeah. right? Yeah. So Jay could do that in his truth, man. They take all, all your stuff and they have them to reign over you. But yeah, how was y'all didn't look like that? Uh, what was it? Yeah, go ahead. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. But you, you, was breaking, you was breaking it down, so like I ain't want to interrupt when you were speaking about uh, the servants for themselves. You want to run that back, but for Kasha. Okay. This is 1 Samuel 8 and 16, and he will take your men servants and your maid servants, uh -huh. and your goodliest young men and your asses, and put them to his work. He will take the tenth of your sheep, and you shall be his servants. Yeah, man, he gonna take, he gonna take a tenth of you. Whatever he, you ain't even do nothing, man. Esau, Saul, go ahead. And you shall cry out in that day because of your king, which you shall have chosen you, and Yahweh will not hear you in that day. That's heavy. That's heavy when you read. Yeah. He said, "Yeah, I will not what hear you, hear you in that, in that day. day, man." Yep. So the house of Saul, because that's who we were talking about. Right. And guess what? The house of Saul is back, man. Who is it? It's these men that's over the congregations of Israel, the scribes, the Pharisees, the hypocrites, right? Because they said a true king understands that he's here to serve his people. You know, you got a lot of guys want to look like they they leaders in Israel, man. Instead of just actually being a leader, which is doing what? Making yourself a servant. Yahweh Shah told his disciples that. They, they was like, hey, who's the greatest? You know? Who's the greatest? He said the man that humbles himself, but the man that seeks to be king right. shall serve them all. So you, you got a lot of guys trying to jump up saying that King David, you know? You got a lot of guys trying to say they damn Elijah. He not, you don't even know who you is, man. John ain't know who he was until Yahweh Shah told him in a parable. He didn't even tell him straight out. You know? <clears throat> but that's why you got to come to the, to this new covenant. Because Yahweh Shah, as we said, he didn't move like that. This is Matthew 11 and 28. He says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Yeah. You see? You letting the, the, the house of Saul rule over you. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest for your soul, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yeah, yeah, me and some brothers were speaking about that yesterday, about the yoke, man, being easy. It's not, it's not burdensome, man. You got, you, when you come home, you want to be able to have rest in the spirit man not in a disgruntled uh spirit yeah 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 yeah. you know you want to be in the spirit of relaxation man the lord got me the lord took care of my sins the lord is going to come back for me and i'm not have to go through uh 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 troubles you know what do you bring uh romans chapter 5 verse 9 you know the Lord is going to take care of us, man, in those times. Regardless of how the outcome looks, as we've been saying the whole thing, no matter what's going on, missiles, fires, you know, troops up and down the road, the Most High said he's going to do what? Uh, this is Romans chapter 5, and I started verse 8. But God commended his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Hamashiach died for us. Right. Much more than being now justified mm -hmm. by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. We shall be what? Saved from wrath through him. Through him. Through the blood. We bring this out so that you can be justified through the blood, you know, and don't have to worry about being trodden and burdened by men. Or destroyed. Or destroyed. It says, for when we, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to the Most High by the death of His Son. Right. 
all right not by the deeds of the law man not by wearing fringes all right not by looking uh, 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 like a damn Pharisee all right for when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his son much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life and not only so but we also join the most high through our lord yahweh shah mashiach by whom we have now received the atonement you know so once the lord sprinkle you man you good your mind your mind has been uh, uh, uh cleansed man you are you straight from this point on so you don't have to do all these heavy uh laden works because that's what the pharisees was doing they was taking the law right and they was making it burdensome to men and they themselves ain't even doing it same shit they doing today because you have a nigga wearing an e5 with mixed fabrics on telling you you going off <laughs> you know what i'm saying right. it's cotton and then they got sick on that mug 98 yeah. percent polyester whatever the case may be and then say that you with it. You know so the lord ain't coming to deal that's why he said i ain't come for the i came for the for the sick man yeah. you know that's why we not even gonna go back and forth with you because you already think in your mind you good right we out here for those who actually need it man right. all right that's why I, I, we done even just talking to, to people on youtube man all right <laughs> but as you said last time we are watchmen, man. You know, yeah. that's why we do this. This is why we are here on this street, on this block. You know, so that we can bring back that fruit as it speaks about in John 15, man. The Lord gave us that portion to do. That's what we're supposed to do. We don't, it's, you know, you got to have tunnel vision. Because that tunnel vision is doing the will of the Lord. We can't be watching here and there, you know, about how someone is speaking of us. We got to be speaking hey, the will of the Lord to bring in that, what we just said in uh, Re Revelation chapter 7, man. Sealing the elect with the what? Thawah. Right, right. Men been doing this for, you know, years, man. Going back and forth. What has it, how did it satisfy our people, man? Can you do me one favor, man? <laughs> huh? No, you no, good, no, no, you good, you good. You believe in the Bible? Yeah, man. Hey, we we not we not here for that, right? I, I want I want to ask you something, man. When it come to uh, like religious people, yeah. do they do they do they uh, make the, do they make God unappealing? I mean, I'm a little. I've been up for two days. I don't know if y'all want to record. Nah, we good, bro. I just I'm just asking asking a simple question. I mean, like, mm -hmm. With me. It seems like the more I try to be better and try to do the right thing, it seems like it got harder and harder. You know what I mean? Okay. It do be like and that. And it's like they be more aggressive and not trying to be uh, respectful. You know what I'm saying? So it started kind of making me want to go the other route. You know what I'm saying? The balance of that. Okay. Uh, That's I, I got you. I don't know if I've been doing the right thing or the wrong thing. I know I've been doing the wrong thing. I guess I just gotta keep, keep on pushing. I don't know. Grab right, right brother uh, Sirach chapter 2 real quick. Uh, Bob Bashar. Right? Because the brother said when he tried to do good, it got harder. Right? Yeah. It'd be like that. Right? See, I struggle with like wait a minute we ain't here to condemn nobody man right but i do want to give you this uh two or two yeah we can start there Done. i just started one yeah start at one yeah yeah this is a this is sirach chapter two verse one uh -huh. my son if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. That's it. So, hey, man, you coming to serve the Lord, yeah, you're going to go through difficulties, man. You're going to get a, you're going to have a lot of uh, women that are whores. They're they going to try to jump on you, man. 
if that's a weakness, Satan going to send it to you. Shoot, I had a problem smoking weed, right? As soon as I wanted to uh, serve, serve the Lord, they wanted to give me ounces. You know what I'm saying? I'm front you two ounces, man. For what? Because of that. Go ahead. Come on, verse 2. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou may that thou mayest be increased at the last end. Yeah, that's it. So when temptation comes, you gotta be able to cleave to the Lord, man. Pray to him. That's a lot of people's weakness. When something comes up, you don't you don't automatically go to the Father, man. But that's what's gonna actually get Satan to leave you, is when you start praying. And we we already know how hard it is, man. Shit, like I said, I used to smoke weed, right? Yeah, I used to be a pimp around here. You know? And shit, that shit, you already know how that, that underbelly be, man. Oh, yeah. The women be beautiful, the yeah. money, the money be fast, all that. Yeah. But I had to pray to the Lord anytime these opportunities came. But go ahead, it's lock you. God. My bad. Now you good. This, this is verse four. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully uh -huh. and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. Yeah. If Satan can't get you with temptation, he's gonna try to take everything you got like Job. So he said, even when you like Job and he lost everything, Job ain't give up his faith on the Lord. That's part of the battle. When you come in and serve the, the most high, man, and you gotta be willing to throw it all away. So like, go ahead. God. Unless you wanna bring something else. I was just gonna bring out that Roman that Paul was saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, that I would do. Yeah. Uh -huh. We can grab that. Yeah, we'll grab it. Uh, this is a uh, of mine, brother couple more scriptures this is Sirach chapter 2 verses 5 for gold is tried in the fire for what for gold is tried in the fire that's right and acceptable men in this furnace of that's adversity that's it because we all everybody has a their heart is our mind but the Lord says a certain men I've made them to be like gold you know so you're gonna get your mind thrown in that fire man but you got to be able to withstand it because that's how he proves <laughs> that something is gold, man. I've been going through it, but I've been taking myself through it. It's like, you know, it's the same, it's the same cycle, you know, exactly. just, you know. You ain't, you ain't doing nothing no other man has done, man. You know? Yeah, but like, the things I do sometimes, like, like, man, I was, I was laying down in the way at the ground trying to get me. That's what we were speaking about earlier about I don't that. Be like that. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, that's what we were saying earlier about the outward appearance, you know. The first the mind gonna think in the spirit. Then the ball the body gonna it's gonna follow it, man. So the first thing you thinking about, you know, some box or whatever, first thing you gotta do is be like, pray to the Lord and I'll take that away, you know. Well ain't there ain't nothing wrong with getting some, it's just about who you yeah, from. yeah, who you get it from, you know? Because the Lord said, hey, look, he said, uh, uh, a righteous woman, who can find? Right. You know what I'm saying? Hey, thoughts is everywhere, man. But to actually have a, uh, a decent, good woman, that's hard, man. But the Lord got to gift you with that. So uh, he said, I give a, a, a wicked man a wicked woman and a righteous man a righteous woman. But uh, let, let me grab the scripture my brother wanted to get real quick. I'm going to hold my piece. This is Romans chapter 7. In verse 14, for we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I would do, for that which I do, I allow not. So here it is, right here, brother. For this that, is. for that which I do, I allow not. For what I would do, I do not. But what I hate is what I do. So everything you just said, the Bible just said the same thing. You know, uh, book of Romans, uh, book of Romans Paul. Paul. Yeah. He says, "If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good." Why? Because the law tells you what is sin, right? It says, "Now then, 
it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. So it's not you, brother. See, every man has already, Satan has sown sin into the hearts of men. So it's not you. You in your mind know like, hey man, I'm not trying to do this, but I'm still doing it. Why? Paul just told you. It's because that is the seed of Satan already in the mind. All right? Another thing, like the government be playing that seed, like the rap song, the movement, yeah, yeah, yeah. the things they show on TV. So they be handing it to the government. Oh, yeah, most definitely. We say it, you know, social media. Yes. Yeah. You know? And then you got sisters out there. You know, not being able to be guidance by their father, uh -huh. and so they want attention. They want to be in the flesh, so that makes their flesh and your flesh yeah, want to collide, man. You know, because why they they knew if they go in the flesh, they're gonna be able to get you for what to get something to receive something. Yeah, yeah. Man. Yeah. You know, so everything is the flesh, man. Okay, let's grab this <laughs> yeah, uh, real quick. Proverbs chapter thirty-one. Mm -hmm. In verse uh, Proverbs 31 and 3 Give not thy strength unto women Nor thy ways to that which destroys kings yeah. <laughs> you got it up. yeah man I always go to that You know Give not thy ways You know <laughs> nor, give, no, give not thy strength man You know you Can't give them your strength When you give them your strength And they ain't worthy They gonna bring you down That's right that's why I was saying, hey, what was it, uh, Surat? We were talking about a Surat, 24. You want to bring it out? I keep on going. Right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I ain't going to hold you too much, but I do want to show you this, though. Proverbs 31 and 3. Give not thy strength unto women, nor thy ways to that which destroys kings. Because Adam fell that way. Sam uh, Samson was strong as man. Yeah. He fell. Fuck with hoes. Yeah. Right? It says, it is not for kings... Oh, lamb you well, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert judgment and, and any of the afflicted. So yeah, man, hey, wine, wine and uh, women, scriptures say, takes away your wisdom, man. <laughs> you know? So yeah, I mean, the scriptures say, look, you can have multiple wives, man, but a man must have wisdom. You must be able to have wisdom and control. If you can't control, your little head, man, your big, your big head gonna, gonna follow suit. And you're gonna be destroyed out here, man. But <laughs> let's see, whatever you wanna bring out, I. Uh, here it is. I'm, let's go read this real quick. This is Sirach chapter 9, verse 2. Give not thy soul unto a woman to set her foot upon thy substance. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Meet not with an harlot. Least thou fall into her snares. Yes, yeah, trap. I'm telling you, man, I used to be a villain. Shit. Oh. All right, buddy. All right, buddy. Let's finish that, let's finish that. All right. It says, uh, Sirach chapter nine, verse two. Uh -huh. Meet not with an harlot, lest thou fall into her snares. Uh -huh. Use not much the company of a woman that is a singer, lest thou be taken with her attempts. Yeah, that's basically what you were saying earlier about singers and TV and, and uh, uh, social media, all that, man. These are snares and traps, man. Have your mind in the stronghold. That's it. Yeah, yeah, the, Lord, yeah, the Lord said in the last days that his elect men, they seven women gonna they gonna be running us down in the last days, right. man. Yeah. But that's only the, the elect holy men. The right? elect final men. Yeah. 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 You, you it, uh, Isaiah three. Isaiah four, oh, and four and one. Yeah. Let me just read him this right here. Gaze not on a maid that thou fall. Not by those things that are precious in her. Give not thy soul unto harlots, that thou lose not thy inheritance. So if you had some cheese, man, <laughs> you gonna give all your money. Uh -huh. Everything that you work for, you just give it away, you know, on that harlot, man. Go ahead, bro. But if you are a righteous man in these days, this is gonna happen, man. Yep, this is Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. And in that day, Seven women shall take hold of one man, 
saying we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Yeah. So you got that, that's that righteous man. That's the, the difference between a righteous man and getting seven women into a man is wicked. So he gonna lose all his heritage. He just gained inheritance, you know? He's able to be able to use these women in righteousness. You know, I want to make sure that's right, because you know our brother be trying to trip, man, but in righteousness, man. You know? And you will be able to have it. The uh Abraham, what's that? Who else had one uh, David? Solomon. Solomon. They all had multiple wives, man. You know? But what does it matter if you ain't got wisdom? Because Solomon was wise. Yeah. But why did he fall? Because he lacked wisdom when it came to women, man. Mm -hmm. Right? But it's bigger than women. Shoot. Uh, let's grab that um, Wisdom of Solomon chapter, what is it, 7? You know, the, the Lord going to give us the whole world. Right? He's going to give us the whole entire world to rule over. But you got to be wise, man. You got to be able to control the flesh. Right? And no, we can't even do that. Matter of fact, how do you control the flesh? By letting the Holy Spirit take hold of you, man. So you got to be able to, number one, accept the Lord Yahweh Shah, who the world knows is Jesus Christ. And he's going to lead you and guide you, man. Where we start at? Uh, this is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 1. Hear therefore, O ye kings, and understand, learn ye that be judges of the ends of the earth. Right, so he's only talking to a select few. If you're not a king and a judge of the ends of the earth, meaning that you ain't ruling the whole earth, this ain't for you. Right? Go ahead. Give ear, ye that rule the people in glory in the multitudes of nations, for power is given you of the Lord. That's right. And sovereignty from the highest, mm -hmm. who shall try you, shall try your works right. and search out your counsel. Right, he's gonna try your words. He's gonna sit back and watch everything that you do and see what you meditate on. He sees what you say and what you think to see if they match up, right? But let's go ahead to this uh, last verse. Con. Well, matter of fact, let's hit verse uh, 19. Con. In that, in that. 19. Yeah. This is uh, Wisdom of Solomon chapter six, verse 19. Mm -hmm. And the incorruption make us near unto the most high. Right. Therefore, ahead. The desire of wisdom bringeth bringeth to a kingdom. Yeah, the desire of wisdom, the desire of the Holy Spirit is what's going to bring us the kingdom of heaven. That's where you're going to get all your heart's desires. Go ahead. Verse 21. If your delight be in, if if, if your delights be then in throne, thrones and scepters, right. O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom. Right. So if you want the mansions, because of Yahweh Shai, who the world Jesus Christ said, in my father's house are many mansions, right? He says, you're going to have gold laid up as the dust. So when you go and you, you know, run your finger across the dirty table, he said, that's how your gold is going to be stacked up in the kingdom, man. Right? If your desires and thrones and scepters, go ahead. John, if, if your delight be then in thrones and scepters, O ye kings of the people, honor wisdom that ye may reign forevermore. That we may reign forever and ever. Go ahead. As for wisdom, what she is and how she came up, I will tell you and will not hide mysteries from you, but will seek, but will seek her out from the beginning of her nativity, nativity mm -hmm. and bring the knowledge of her into light. And that's what we're doing right now with you. Really so all this comes by way of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. The way that a man overcomes this flesh, as we was reading in Romans chapter 8, because the flesh is what's going to get you killed, man. If you walk in the flesh, you out of here. But, go ahead. Yeah, you know that, you remember, uh, you ever watched that movie uh, with Daredevil and what is that? Uh, when he had the book, the book oh, of Eli. 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 He got it. Remember that woman that was a child, like he knew in the spirit oh, that yeah. he couldn't deal with her. Cause he knew it was a setup, but if he was in his flesh, he would have what? He would have got on to her, and then they they was behind the hill waiting for him, man. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's terrible for Satan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we're alive. Yeah.
But it says right here, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwells no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I do not know. For the good that I would do, I don't do it. But the evil that I would not do is what I do. Now if I do that, I would not. It is no more I that do it, but sin that dwells in me. I find then a law that when I want to do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of the Most High after the inner man, but I see another law in my members, mm -hmm. warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So you warn with, you know, what all the brothers be, you be warring with that, man, with that flesh, trying to work in your spirit. But those members in that, when you run that bad bubble shop, yeah, for I delight in the law of the Most High after the inward man, mm -hmm. but I see a law, another law in my members warring against the law of my mind right. and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. So you become a slave to your sins. And it says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Yahweh Shah Hamashiach, or Jesus Christ our Lord, so then, with the mind, I, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. It says, therefore, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Yahweh Shai, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So that's why he said you got to put the flesh to death, man, and walk in the, walk in the Holy Spirit. From now on. I love it. Go. You know, so that's basically I'm just sitting it. down. Uh, you got anything that you want You're to finding say? a way to either leave me there overnight. Hey, I'm just saying, like. <laughs> We been, we all been through, we all be going through it, bro. Oh, yeah. Cause you know, as I tell my brothers all the time, as men of the Lord, we we've been deprived on this side, man. Yeah. We deprived. The brother just read you as a four one. We was always happy multiple wives. You take that away from men, and what did he do? He fall weak to a woman. You know, just like he read in Proverbs, man. You know, give not thy strength to a woman, nor thy ways, but which destroy kings. So, you know, that's the first thing when you see, even when they walk by us, man, what's the first thing we do? The eyes get them moving, you know? Why? Because they, they have given them the power. If you allow them to in your flesh. And, man, it's, it's, it's been a war ever since, man, that was Adam and Eve, man. And to this day, bro. We ain't gonna wanna hold you, man. We just wanted to kind of give you a little truth, bro. All right, I appreciate it, man. I'm glad I stopped. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's up it. there, around the corner, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, save your money. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Appreciate you, All right, man. man. Uh, what are we getting at, man? Uh, I forgot. It's all good. Bro, we were just talking about, like, you know, having a king, man. And, it, and that's even the same thing, like the brother was saying, like, even being a king over your temple, your tabernacle, man. You know, being able to rule over your, that's why I always read, uh, say the, the Hebrew prayer, you know, Zadnat Yahya, Zadnat Naya, which helped me, Yahaba Shimei Afsha, Father which art in heaven, Lama Ataza'a, which means to rule Barak in my spirit, man. Because we out here, we see things pass by us. You got to rule your spirit over your flesh. It's easy to be the uh, sidetracked. Man. Yeah, you know, that brother didn't go that direction no more. Right, yeah, come <laughs> He was about to go up the hill. Right. You know? Yeah. But he ended up going that way, so. And that's the second time something like that happened through the word of the Most High. Even the brother had said something to a dude that had an addiction, man. Right? He was going to go try to get a fix, but he went the opposite direction. That's what the word of the Most High do. You know, it puts you in that once it, once it's that piercing of the sword, two-edged sword, man. It'll keep you from doing that thing, and that's that you know burning that spirit within you, man. Hope of the Most High will dwell with him uh, in that sin, man. Because you know, brothers go through that a whole lot, man. That's one of the most, <laughs> that's one of the heaviest things that men, you know, that had to overcome is 
that lustful sin through your flesh. Why? Because it's thrown at you 24-7, man. You can't go nowhere without some flesh being in your presence, man. Pushed into your presence. And like you said, who shall cast it away, man? The blood of Hamasha and Yahusha. I think that's about it, though, man. Right. We, we did what we had to do. I'm going to um, get a couple precepts for you, bro. Yeah, that. Proverbs 20 and 24. Man's going around the Lord. Can a man, how yeah, can a man then understand his own way? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we were talking about that earlier. Yeah. But like, you know, the Lord use, will use you as an angel, man. You'll be like, man, I'm hungry. Right. You know, go, I, I, all of a sudden I got an urge to get some food. You go out there, get your food, come back out. And somebody that's homeless on the side of the street and guess what they needed, food. Mm -hmm. You know, so he'll even do that with us, man. Yeah. And figure out, right, I'm only here to serve this person, man. You know, that's what we are. We're servants of the Lord. So even him coming by this way, usually right. we preach down there. Right. But today he had to send it over here to do what? Stop him from going up the street. Yeah, that's another, that's another good thing. Ecclesiastes 25 too. Yeah, yeah. Sirach. Oh, yeah. Yep, Sirach 25 and 21. Stumble not at the beauty of a woman and this and desire her not for pleasure. Yeah. 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 I control yourself, man. Yeah. You know? as, soon as, as soon as you you think with your little head, man, you out of here. Yeah. You know that shit. Look at uh, look at all the men of, of old. All the men. Yeah. All the, to the wisest, the wisest Solomon. To you know what I'm saying. To the men that that walk upon this earth today. Still stumbling, still falling. And for y'all sisters out there, you know, there's nothing against y'all. It's just that you got to be a woman of what? Of, uh, how the Lord tell us a woman should be? A modest of pearls, man. A righteous woman. A righteous woman. It, it don't apply to them. Right. If it's the shoe, if, you know? If the shoe fit, yeah, 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 yeah. You know? Now, we ain't talking to uh, sisters that's going right. You know, we ain't out here to bash, <laughs> to bash them either. You right. know what I'm saying? As we said, we we not here to condemn. All right, we only here to uh, to get people right. So let's see one last one. Let's finish it off. Woo! Look at that. Jeremiah twenty nine and eleven. Bro. We gotta get there. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremiah twenty nine and eleven. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Say of Yahweh, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Yeah. You know, because they'll push that on you, man, making you think that the Lord just constantly thinking about destroying you all the time. He, the Lord said different. Right? The Lord said he wants you to come into it's a, a pleasure for him to give you the kingdom, man. Yeah. So you got it, I'm good. Yeah, I, 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 yeah I'm good, man. Yeah, I'm good, you know. Hey, and to honor for y'all brothers and sisters to have patience, but like we say, man, we'll stop, we'll stop what we're doing, you know, to talk to the people, man. You know, as the brother I always want to do, he said sometimes, you know, he don't even want YouTube on, man, you know. I'm just going to say this straight up, but we do it to edify, you know, the sheep, man, that's coming in either on YouTube or the one walking up and down these streets, man. All right, man, with that, let me see, let me see. All right. And with that, I want to give all praise and honor and glory to the Heavenly Father. Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Bashim, Kakadash. Lord willing, I was edifying to you, uh, Akim, and you, Akwa, you brothers and you sisters. Until next time, Shalom. Shalom.